All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we are going to talk about the 140 pound division. I had some a couple conversations over the last few weeks and they have kind of come together uh, in my in my head and going to talk about it in this video. The first topic was that Gervonta Davis said a few weeks ago that he was really looking and trying to make a really big fight, something that was going to make everybody very, very excited in boxing. And then the second thing that took place was that Terrence Crawford was stripped of these IBF title. However, writers from the Boxing, Associ Boxing Writers Association of America that wrote for Ring Magazine, that, that write for Boxing Scene, which I think are the, probably the two biggest boxing, strictly bo boxing um, mainstream media publications, uh, said something about Undisputed and how Terrence Crawford is still undisputed at 147 pounds despite the fact that he no longer has a belt. Well, if that if one is if both of these are true, then I'm sure that these media outlets are going to be consistent. If what is rumored to be Gervonta Davis's goal comes to fruition. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 140 pound division where Gervonta Davis may be positioned to become the undisputed champion at 140 pounds in one fight, despite the fact that Regis Progre, Gabriel Matias, and uh, <laughs> let's not forget. Roly Romero are champions in that division. Now, you can say, Fanon, how in the world can that happen? Well, according to Ring Magazine writers and boxing scene writers, it is 100 percent a possibility. Now, before I get into the details of it, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much. Matty Yo, you my guy. Special man. All kind of thanks to you, sir. Thank you for your continued. So thank you for your continued support. Um, but let's get into this. <sighs> people's logic are real funny. Uh, and the media plays a lot of games with people's money <laughs> when they put out articles and they say things and they and they w live in the moment uh, as far as what they believe is going on in the sport of boxing. And this is another example of it. A couple weeks ago, Gervonta Davis said that he was going to be making a big announcement and they were trying to close a, a certain fight. Right now, I had some team members of his on on my channel and they kind of went around about what it could be. And after speaking with them, even though they were very um, uh, cloak and dagger about it. It was my opinion that the most likely person that they could be trying to get into a fight is Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo Lopez is a former four belt holder at a, at uh, at one hundred and thirty five pounds that for some reason, uh, Devin Haney fans are dead set at never calling him the undisputed champion in that division. So, however, ESPN called him that. I don't see why I have yet to hear a good explanation for why he's not. However, all kind of controversy around that one related to the WBC making a franchise belt, even though the WBA has the same belt and nobody is saying anything about it. However, once Tiafimo Lopez moved up, he fought at 140 pounds against a guy named Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor, nobody disputes that he was the undisputed. No one disputes that he was undisputed at 140 pounds. 
He subsequent to his after his win of all four belts, dropped some belts. Right. But defended his belts, but wound up dropping some belts. And by the time Tiafimo Lopez fought him, he only held the WBO. But after that fight, several people in the media and Derek James, who's the trainer of Errol Spence Jr., called him un- called him the undisputed champion and said, look, man, T- nobody beat Josh Taylor in the ring. This is the logic. Nobody beat Josh Taylor in the ring. Josh Taylor is still the undisputed champion in that division. So when Tiafimo Lopez beat T beat Josh Taylor, he became the undisputed champion, even though there are three other champions in that division. Now, the funny thing here is, though, well, first, I do believe that the fight that is most likely to take place at 140 for Gervonta Davis, which would be a big fight, is the fight with Tiafimo Lopez. And I believe that for several reasons. The main reason is that they've got two different demographics uh, uh, Latin, Latin or Hispanic uh, fight fans and black fight fans. And typically that's the way that in the smaller weight classes, really big fights have been made. Also, you have uh, Teofimo Lopez, who is as much as anybody else in that division, a big draw. He's got a personality to sell the fight and he's back on he's back on top. Now, how ironic will it be if Gervonta Davis moves up, beats Tiafimo Lopez to win the WBO uh, championship, and then begins to call himself undisputed. I guarantee you that everybody that called that called Tiafimo Lopez undisputed, and is still calling Terrence Crawford undisputed at 147 pounds, will quickly forget. <laughs> what their logic was when it comes to Gervonta, when it when it comes to Gervonta Davis, you know, or somebody that is with the PB, somebody is with the PBC, or a fighter, an American fighter, for whom they do not have as much affection as they have other fighters. But the whole, and also, it is going to be funny because Devin Haney's camp in the person of. Of Bill Haney, who said this on my on on my live stream, said that Devin Haney is still undisputed at 135 pounds, even though he dropped his WBC belt. And again, based on the idea that nobody has beaten him. So, what does this really do? And this, what does this logic really do to um, the idea of champions? It makes it completely subjective and completely in the mind of any particular person and what they think is important, which is why we have these ridiculous conversations about whether Tiafimo Lopez was ever undisputed in, in the first place. And now that you get undisputed and people have four of the belts, you it does it is not it has not made this championship alphabet soup problem go away. It's just added a different level of confusion to it because again, people start with their conclusion and they work backwards from there and try to explain it. If they want their, if their guy refuses to fight somebody for whatever reason, whether it is money, whether it is a legacy and you don't have anything to offer me and they decide not to do it in the case, as was the case with Devin Haney, and Terrence Crawford, well, the guys that get the belts aren't really champions because those guys never lost. However, if the guy that never lost loses and he loses to somebody that those people do not necessarily like, all of a sudden they're going to go back to the rule of, well, you know, you got to have all four belts. And on and on we go ad nauseum forever. Very, very, very big problem in the sport of boxing and it is the fact that when any whenever somebody asks you who the champion is you have to have a half an hour 45 minute conversation in order to get there it's absolutely ridiculous but anyway that's my take on the matter please let me know what you think in the comment section and with that i'm out deuces <laughs>